Welcome back everyone. In this video, I'll be taking India's hardest exam, the JEE Advanced. This exam is super hard. The exam both mushkile. That was my Hindi for all the foreign viewers. Now, I made a video in the past where I took the JEE main, and I did fairly well on that, but the comments on that video and my viral video were like, you know what, you need to face a real exam, you need to face a hard exam. Take the JEE Advanced. So in this video, I'm going to do just that. Now, before I take the exam, let me explain what the JEE Advanced is to all the non-Indian viewers. The JEE stands for Joint Entrance Exam. Now, the JEE Advanced is used to grant admission to the top IIT universities in India for students who are trying to, you know, get to these engineering schools that are top of their class. They're basically all Harvard. People spend months and years preparing for this exam as it is one of the hardest exams, if not the hardest exam in India. And I, an American Indian who has been raised through the American education system, I'm pretty curious to see, you know, how well I do. All right, so this is my setup. I have my laptop where I'll be taking the exam. I got some scratch paper because I know I'll be doing a lot of scratch work at this exam. I predict it's gonna be probably the hardest exam I've ever taken in my life, but we'll get past it. And let's get into it. Okay, so the JE, I forgot to mention, has three parts. It has the physics part, the chemistry, and the math. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with the math. Um, simply because you know I'm like the math guru, so let's see how this goes. All right, so number one to nine are multiple choice questions. Okay, if the length of the perpendicular from zero 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 to plane ax plus b by c equals zero, <laughs> oh buddy, all right. You know what? Let's do question two. Um, okay, no, same thing almost. Question three. Oh, okay. Radius of a circle who touches x squared plus y squared is 16. Okay, so radius is four. x squared plus y squared equals 16. So center is zero, zero. Okay. Angle between the direct common tangents. Next question. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. This one I can. This one I can do. All right. This one we're gonna do. All the three vertices of an equilateral triangle lie on the parabola y equals x squared. So all three vertices of an equilateral triangle. So they're all the same length. Okay. One with side is the slope of two. So that's positive. So let's say the left side has slope of two. The sum then sum of x coordinates of the three vertices of triangles. What? Nani? <laughs> I'm thinking the answer will have to be 3 over 11, and the reason is it can't be 6 over 11, okay, because none of the other choices have 6, and no choice is negative beside 1. So it's either 3 over 11 or 3 over 22. If we set the equation equal, so 2x plus b equals x squared, right, then we subtract 2x to both sides, so we get b equals x squared minus 2x. Factor out the x, we get b equals x times x minus 2. Uh, next question. <laughs> oh my, this is only section 1, guys. This is only section 1. I wonder if it gets harder as you move on. Let's try question 8, question 9. Okay, question 9. For a series magnitude of nth term and sum of first n terms are equal. If first term is 1, then seventh term is. What? Okay, so we have the first term is 1. Alright, first term is 1. So the seventh term. So, so what will the second term be? Alright, let's find the series. What will the second term be? Okay, so both mushkile. Alright, so we got. The first term is one. Okay, so the, the seventh term is equal to the first term plus the second plus the third plus the fourth plus the fifth plus the sixth, right? So the seventh term is, let's say it's M. All right, we, we don't know the seventh term. The second term, let's say it's, actually let's say the seventh term is one over two over seven. One over two, two to seven. That means the second term will have to be, um, uh, you know, I'm gonna guess one over two to six and go next. I wonder if it tells you the answer at the end. I hope so. All right, we're at section two now, we're at section two. Okay, we're moving on. Vectors. So, I actually learned vectors and matrices and all of that my first semester of college. Uh, you know, obviously a pandemic occurred, 
in the middle and now my math is a little weak you guys are super hard i'm trying to act like they're easy they're super hard guys like i don't know why people in india and students in india have to take an exam this hard there is no reason why you are not finding the cure to cancer okay you are not creating the next apple okay by taking this exam like, there's no reason this exam should be administered to students like, i can see why students are stressing and are crying over this exam like, i've seen students like like my own cousin in india like they go crazy like, i've seen their like how much they study for this they wake up at 4 a.m and they study the entire day and sleep at like 2 a.m it's like two hours of sleep meanwhile in the u.s we study for like one hour <laughs> we go play video games or basketball or whatever zero to affinity Cosine infinity is an into function satisfying f of x of f y equals x squared over y. Next question. Okay, you know what? I think we need a break from the math section. You know, uh, in total, after after nine minutes of footage, I have answered two questions, and I have absolutely no idea if I got them right because they were basically a guess. Let's try section one of physics. Okay, um, I took physics, AP physics, when I was in eleventh grade. So for all the Indian viewers, when I was 11th standard, right? Um, so it's been a long time, it's been three years. I got a three out of a five on my exam, my AP physics exam. So, you know, I'm okay at physics, not too bad. Let's see if I can crack this. Okay. Front AB, the shown figure represents a wave front AB, which passes from air to another transparent medium and produces a new wave front CD after refraction. The refractive index of the... <laughs> Oh, thank you. This question I can do. A negative test charge is moving near a long straight current carrying wire. A force will act on the test. See, see, like stuff like this. If you're being a computer scientist, right? Let's say you, for the engineering college, you decide to do computer science. You will not need to know about a current and a wire and all the electricity that goes on, you know, between them. Now, we don't need to know this, right? All we need to know is how to, you know, close a line of code with semicolon, that's it. A force will act on the test charge in a direction parallel to the di direction of the current, okay? If the motion of the charge is in a, wait, what? Oh, okay, so what will make the force parallel to the direction of the current? It can't be, op if it's opposite, that's not perpendicular, right? Because one goes this way, one goes this way. So that's not perpendicular. Wait, parallel, not perpendicular. Oh, so it should be opposite, right? Because if you're moving this way, and then moving this way, they're parallel because they'll never intersect. So it should be opposite to that of current. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, th I think we got our first question correct, guys. You got our first one, so let's tap it up. A beam of electrons striking a copper target produce x-rays. A spectrum is sh as is shown. Keep the voltage same if the copper target is replaced with a different metal. The cutoff wavelength and characteristic lines in the new spectrum will change in comparison with old ads. This problem is testing your knowledge of electricity, current, voltage, all of that. Um, well, my knowledge is pretty low on that. But if I remember correct from 11th grade of high school, so the length will definitely change. So the wavelength will have to change and the characteristic lines. Uh, what, what does that mean? I do not remember what characteristic lines means when it comes to spectrums. But I'm thinking that they're going to be different as well right because a different metal is a different conductor so yeah it has to be right all right no a stone is projected at an angle 45 degrees with horizontal okay i'm now gonna draw this one out okay so we got at an angle 45 degrees with the horizontal okay so yeah, 45 degrees a B follows the trajectory of the stone at a constant speed equal to the initial speed of the stone. So let's say the initial speed is um, um, 10 meters per second. The B, and then it becomes 5 meters per second. The B travels 10 meters per second beginning as well. The magnitude of acceleration would be the topmost point of trajectory. So acceleration is... 9.82 meters per second squared, right? That's the gravitational acceleration. It should be G. Like, no matter where you are, right? No matter how high you are, you're still exposed to the same level of gravity. So, whether you're at the topmost point of a mountain or the under the ocean, it should still be G. Like, the, the acceleration due to gravity should be the same. Well, under the ocean is water distance, but, you know, this should be great. 
You know, maybe I'm good at physics, guys. I thought I was really bad at it, but I think I'm kind of good. Okay, so a pendulum made of an insulated, rigid, massless rod of length L is attached to a small sphere of mass M and charge cube. The pendulum is undergoing oscillation in a small amplitude having time period. Now, a uniform horizontal magnetic field out of plane of page is switched on. As a result of this change, the time period of oscillation does not change. <clears throat> I've been taking chemistry since 10th grade, okay? That was the last time I took chemistry. I know NaCi is a sodium fluoride. 